What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So ever since the announcement that Microsoft would be purchasing Activision Blizzard, there's been a lot of questions around Call of Duty and if it will remain on the PlayStation platform. Well, a new report that was published yesterday at least gives us a pretty good idea as to when the series could leave the platform. We're gonna go over that one here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Project Spartacus once again as another strange instance on the PlayStation Network has people pointing towards PlayStation 3 compatibility, and we're also going to be talking about a bunch of Star Wars games that have now been announced to be in development at Respawn. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton, and if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're going to start today with Blizzard, because they did have a big announcement yesterday that still leaves a lot to the imagination, but... It does appear we have a new IP coming from Blizzard at some point. We can see this post over on Twitter. We're building a survival game in an all new universe. Join us in writing our next chapter. In this post, they basically go over uh, this new IP that they are currently working on, this survival game that will be made for PC and console. They say a place full of heroes we have yet to meet, stories yet to be told, and adventures yet to be lived. A vast realm of possibility waiting to be explored. And then they have a call for uh, different artists, designers, and engineers. It, it looks like they have a lot of work to do here. And I mean, Blizzard does take a while to get some of these games out. So this is one I'm thinking we're years and years off of, but it's Pretty cool to see what their next big adventure is here. A brand new IP. Remember the last one we have was what, Overwatch? So I'm looking at this like this could be really cool to follow, but I mean, we might be talking like 2025 or 2026 based on Blizzard's track record. Also, we had talked a little while ago about NVIDIA working to acquire ARM, which is a big deal considering the ARM uh, architecture is used in phones, computers, uh, laptops, all these different things. Well, it looks like NVIDIA may have to back off of this acquisition. We can see this posted up by Bloomberg saying NVIDIA quietly prepares to abandon $40 billion ARM bid. Company tells partners that it doesn't expect deal to close. SoftBank, ARM's current owner, looks at IPO for the business, looking to go public. And a lot of it has to do with just regulations and concerns around what NVIDIA would do if they indeed controlled ARM. I mean, think about uh, all of the companies that use ARM, like, uh, like Samsung, Apple, and then you have NVIDIA come in and they all of a sudden own ARM. Now they say that they would be fair with it, but they obviously you can't completely trust a corporate entity that they wouldn't look around and say, oh, wow, well, we're competing with them and them. Let's uh, let's make it a bit harder for them maybe to get some of these chips or, or, or design around this and, and everything. Obviously, NVIDIA would work to further themselves with the ARM deal. So I feel like regulators looking at this saying that might be a bit too much for the market with how reliant everyone is on ARM. So it looks like, at least for now, we're going to be seeing ARM go public and NVIDIA back off. Oh, and I have good news for people who are looking to jump into Final Fantasy XIV, but were unable to because they just had to stop selling it. There's, they were just too successful, but we can see this posted up. A resumption of sales. Sales of the following products, which had been temporarily suspended, will resume from Tuesday, January 25th. That'd be Final Fantasy XIV, the Starter Edition, Complete Edition, and complete collector's edition, that of course being for the PlayStation and PC. So it's good It's good that they were able to get this all figured out. And based on what a lot of you were saying in the comments, I should be checking this game out. Actually, hold on. You know what, the game's not very good, so you shouldn't go and buy it, at least until I'm in the queue. I, I don't need people filling this one up, but I, w I will at least check it out on, I think on the PlayStation 5. I know something about trying out an MMO like this and seeing how they map everything to the controller could be interesting on its own. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this odd glitch that hit the PlayStation Network. And this is something that keeps coming up. It seems like anyway that Sony is doing something on the back end of the PlayStation Network to prepare for some sort of large announcement and change, maybe with their subscription services. At least that's what Project Spartacus is pointing towards. We can see this though. All PS4 trophies were briefly wiped and labeled PS3. VGC goes on to say the issue has been resolved but has sparked more backwards compatibility speculation. The idea here is an issue with the PlayStation Network caused PlayStation 4 trophies to temporarily disappear overnight with their titles appearing as PS3 games 
Instead, there were a lot of people posting about this on Twitter, by the way, when this was happening, you can see a few of them here, like next gen player showing some trophy data being back to 0% with the PS3 logo and uh, Ryan doing the same thing here. I mean, I just saw all of these screenshots start to pop up on Twitter because it felt like maybe Sony accidentally leaked something out, just trying to work this whole thing out in preparation for their new big subscription service that would deal with legacy systems. And this PS3 stuff, keeps coming up, doesn't it? PlayStation Now had a whole thing where if you looked at a game like Dead or Alive, normally it'd point you towards PlayStation Now. Instead, it came up with pricing, like you could buy a PlayStation 3 game and play it on your PS5. Sony hasn't allowed that at all. So maybe there is something to this PS3 backwards compatibility. It's just hard to believe because it would be something difficult for Sony to accomplish, but we have seen some pretty serious advancements from people just working to build out a PS3 emulator like uh, what RCPS3 that's been successful in doing things like 4K and even bringing back online for some of these games. I do believe that Project Spartacus will be announced probably by the end of February. I, I kind of think they'll push it out through a blog post, but who knows, they could mention it in a state of play. It just seems like Sony is getting ready to at least detail the rest of their 2022 here pretty soon. And it's to me, it's a toss up if it will be in that presentation or just randomly on a Tuesday. Here is what we're doing with our subscription service. It's called uh, PlayStation Plus Plus or something. And here are all the different tiers. Oh, and there's PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP. The question will be though, all of this that's happening right now, is this pointing towards native backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 3 or will it still be streamed? I'm still leaning towards it being streamed and then hey, if it's native, great, I'll be surprised. And also, would we be able to put the disc in the PlayStation 5, similar to what we can do with the Xbox series with older Xbox uh, 360 or original Xbox games and play it from there, or at least trigger a download, but we can still at least use the, basically the disc as an authentication to be able to get the game. A lot of questions here and hopefully Sony's ready to talk pretty soon. Next up, let's talk about Call of Duty and the PlayStation 5. There have been a lot of questions as to the future of Call of Duty outside of Microsoft and their ecosystem now that they have announced that they are purchasing Activision Blizzard should be closing by mid 2023 at the latest to line up with Microsoft's fiscal year. And the question of Call of Duty coming up just continues to be a thing even after Phil Spencer attempted to clarify but used some very vague and open-ended language there on Twitter. Well, we at least have an idea as to what the current contract is that's set up for Call of Duty with Sony, which they did a lot of marketing for that game every single year. I believe they even have like an esports league and all of this stuff set up where they use PlayStations to play it. But we can see this tweet from Jason Schreier saying, Activision is committed to releasing at least the next three Call of Duty games on PlayStation even after the Xbox acquisition. According to people familiar with the deal, that's Call of Duty 2022, 2023, and Warzone 2 in 2023. And really after that, who knows? That's the biggest thing is once these contracts run up, which Sony has said, we hope that Microsoft will at least uphold the contracts that have already been signed. And it seems like from Microsoft's history after different acquisitions with studios, they're completely fine with that and they will at least hold up any obligations that they have that were made prior to the acquisition. And this kind of lines up with what I was thinking where I figured 2024 is the year where we'll see what Microsoft wants to do with the Call of Duty franchise. Will it, would it remain as a PlayStation game as well? Just keep it multi-platform or will that be the year where it's like, well, if you wanna get it, it's Game Pass or nothing. Of course, you could still buy it outside of Game Pass, but Microsoft is looking to blow up those subscription numbers and I think they are really targeting 100 million as their really big milestone, especially with a purchase like this for Activision Blizzard costing them nearly $70 billion in cash. I Call of Duty Warzone 2 is an interesting one because I feel like that would continue to be supported for years and years after its release. So even if the yearly Call of Duty games are are not put on PlayStation, it seems like they'll at least have a presence from Call of Duty for years to come afterwards. Now, Jason does mention uh, in a follow-up tweet that these were all contracts signed before last week's news. And I guess the good part here for Sony is 
they can plan things out a bit better now. They know they'll have Call of Duty through till the end of 2023. And if they can have some sort of shooter or, or basically a tactical shooter, something set up like SOCOM, Killzone, uh, Resistance, really to try to fill in just some of what they'd lose with Call of Duty. They're not gonna fill all of it because Call of Duty is a massive seller overall, but just something to fit in there with a multiplayer shooter to continue to hold up PlayStation Plus subscriptions. They have several years to figure that out now, but at least for now, we know looking towards 2024 is gonna be the year We'll see what Microsoft's true intentions are with the Call of Duty brand. Next up, let's talk about EA, Respawn, and Star Wars. Now, it's no secret EA had a hard time with things like Battlefront 2, but Jedi Fallen Order was legitimately good. If you have not played it, I completely recommend it. Respawn did an awesome job on that game, but there's something strange with that. People are still wondering when the loot boxes are gonna show up or the microtransactions, and they still haven't, which gives me hope for the future of this series because it does sound like we are gonna be seeing another game in the Fallen Order franchise here. In fact, there's an entire posting we can see this here made on EA's website going over their plans for Respawn and how basically they are gonna be working with Lucasfilm Games going forward with several different Star Wars projects now in the works. They say Respawn Entertainment, best known for their work on Apex Legends, Titanfall, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, is leading the development and production of these new projects. They label three of them and have Vince Zampella, the group GM and founder of Respawn, to oversee this new phase of EA's relationship with Lucasfilm. Building on Respawn's award-winning history in game development and expertise in telling compelling Star Wars stories. And... It looks like we have three different Star Wars games to look forward to, two of which are gonna be led by Respawn, and the other one they'll be supporting, but we have an action-adventure game in the Jedi series, so it looks like we'll have something similar to Fallen Order, just, I guess, a sequel or something new in, in that franchise there, which is great. Really happy that EA, despite it being a single-player game with no post-spend or anything, sees the, the overall potential in something like that, and I'm excited what we could get after what we saw there with Jedi Fallen Order. And there's gonna be a new first person shooter game. Doesn't sound like it's gonna be another Battlefront. Might be something, I don't know, it'd be kind of cool if they did maybe a Republic Commando follow up. So just as long as it feels different from the Jedi Fallen Order series, I'm all for that there. And then a new strategy game. This is going to be with Bit Reactor taking the lead and then Respawn supporting. So first of all, love the idea of EA basically just getting out of the way and like, okay, yeah, Respawn. You make the Star Wars games, clearly they know what they're doing with this. And the one downside, and, and trust me, I know, probably means that Titanfall is on the back burner for the foreseeable future. I mean, we have three Star Wars games. Well, two and a half, basically, that Respawn is working on with the other one being led by Bitreactor. They're still running support on it. Tells me we're not going to be seeing Titanfall 3, potentially, for a while. And remember, they're still working on things like Apex Legends. But... I liked it at least they have a plan for Star Wars going forward that doesn't include, I don't know, cards that you get out of a pack for things like Battlefront 2. And they just wanted to have microtransactions and loot boxes all over the place for the Star Wars brand, which who knows, maybe that's what led Disney getting to this point where they just let anyone make Star Wars games now. But I'm at least happy that EA realized that Respawn has a lot of potential with the Star Wars franchise and they're going all in on it now. Like I said, getting out of the way, letting Respawn do their thing. So I'm really excited to see what they have next for Fallen Order, but I'm also curious about this first person shooter style game and which way they'll be taking it. In our last bit of news, I talk about sales for Nintendo and Sony. So let's talk about a sale for Xbox today, that being their lunar sale. We can head over here onto the Xbox store and we can see at the top, even things like Halo Infinite's campaign is marked out. Now, some of these games, obviously they are available on Game Pass and it's hard for me to tell you to just buy it here digitally when you could pick it up, but still, we're gonna be going through some of those. Uh, Grand Theft Auto the Trilogy, the Fin Edition, they have hit it with patch after patch after patch, but at $48 with three pretty good games, uh, you can be the judge of that if it's if it's worth picking up. We do have a way out, 75% off at $7.49 is pretty good. Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection down to $11.99. We have the Batman Arkham Collection down to $8.99. That's pretty good. 
I, again, I like the collection of games to point those out on sale because you get a lot of value there. Bayonetta, the first one, down to $9.99. Biomutant at $35.99. Blasphemous at $6.24. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night at $15.00. And 99 cents. A lot of Castlevania games on sale here with the Advanced Collection at $14.99. The Anniversary Collection, $4.99. Also, Lords of Shadow 1 and 2 are both on sale, each under $10. Pretty good. Symphony of the Night at $4.99. I keep looking at this Chorus game. It's 25% off now, down to $30. Looks like a pretty interesting space kind of action shooter there. Contra Anniversary Collection down to $4.99. Deus Ex Mankind Divide Divided. That's the Digital Deluxe Edition down to $6.00. And 94 cents. And I was looking at Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That's down to four dollars and ninety-nine cents. I I might actually pick that one up digitally and play through it because that has been a while and that was a really fun game. But overall, there are a lot of games on sale, pretty good discounts all the way around. And as usual, leave some comments down below with suggestions. I'm gonna suggest Metal Gear Rising Revengeance at $5 for a pretty unique spin on the Metal Gear franchise. I think it's worth checking out. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a little poll I posted up yesterday where I asked which large company you think would be most likely to enter the space with a new gaming system or console? Apple. 37% lean the way. Then we have Amazon at 32%, Tencent, 17%, and then Google at 14%, which they have their little subscription service with Stadia, and they I guess they use the Chromecast. Google's kind of made their int intentions apparent at this point after getting rid of their studios that they formed after just a year or so. Anyway, uh, Apple at 37%, Amazon there. I think Tencent, believe it or not, might be the most likely based on some of the agreements they're making, but it's hard to argue when you have a $3 trillion dollar company like Apple, they can basically do whatever they want. So if one day they wake up in the morning, they're like, you know what? Let's make a game console to compete. There you go. They might just show up a month later and talk about it in a keynote. But there was a rumor going around that Apple had been poaching different engineers from Microsoft. I believe that was from the uh, Xbox Two podcast. And I talked about this on the second channel a bit more. So make sure you check that out. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Ace saying, had a lot of fun trying out some uh, WoW controller configurations on Steam that worked pretty decent for playing PvE. The ones for the Steam controller even lets you use the left and right touchpads as a mouse or as either side of the keyboard. It's just too bad that the Xbox controller doesn't have gyro. Also, the ultimate plan on Game Pass costs just as much as a WoW subscription, so I can't see why not. That was something that I brought up with people on the Spawncast when we were talking about the idea of WoW going to Game Pass and being a console game even. It's been long rumored for a while, but the part that came up that seems to be an issue is the controller and all of the buttons that you need for World of Warcraft. Now, you can plug a keyboard and mouse into the Xbox. It'll work in different games, so maybe that's the solution. But I think if they could figure it out, much like Final Fantasy XIV has figured it out, which... I, I guess I'll find out here soon enough, but let me know how that goes in the game itself. Then I think it'd be pretty good to see World of Warcraft show up on consoles. I think it would get a lot of excitement back into that uh, franchise that has fallen a bit. Like I said, back in the day, people would nonstop talk about World of Warcraft, and I don't really see anyone talking about it online. I just see Final Fantasy XIV and things like New World. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was this other glitch on the PlayStation Network. Do you think this is all building up to that big Spartacus announcement and PlayStation 3 games being playable? natively. Also, what about Call of Duty on the PlayStation? It appears 2024 is going to be the deciding year. Let me know, does that game stay on PlayStation platforms or does Microsoft pull it back and say, you know what, this is Xbox and Game Pass only. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.